Hello, everybody, and good day on the 30th of July. One more day to go. One more day to go. And guess what we're doing? We are shining the light on someone else. And this person, we I've known, me and Chris have both known for a little while now, a couple of years, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, she's amazing. I believe she writes books. She's going to tell you all about herself. She comes to trivia a lot. We don't like it as men because... She's very good at trivia, and we go men against the women. So, yeah, yeah it's better than she doesn't show up, even though we like her. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to Chris to introduce her because it's about her today. Go ahead, yeah. Chris. Good morning, Marty, my brother. I love you. Uh, Jennifer, I love you, too. I know you're in the background. Um, I'm in a car right now because I'm at an appointment, and it worked out. I'm on my hotspot. So if I disappear, I can come back. Don't worry. I explained that to Jennifer and Marty. Uh, I want to say a little bit about this lady. Number one, she's very exciting. She's absolutely beautiful. And what she does, I would love to do. And she'll talk about that. I think that uh, doing this, we're meeting. Now, we've known Jennifer for a while, like we said. But I think you're going to find what she has to say very interesting. Uh, a lot of people can relate to this young lady because she just does cool stuff. And we're going to find that out. So, Marty, bring her on. Give everybody the heads up with Red today. Oh, yeah. Red, I'm sorry. Red at 11 o'clock will be doing In the Chair, brand new. And I believe it's Victor Gumbalade is going to be his first it is. guest. It is. So, and you said that perfect, by the way. Yeah, it took me right. 10 years to figure it out. but. <laughs> and he, you, he is a motivational speaker. He's on yes. fire, so make sure you yeah, go there. You'll see. And here we go. Drum roll, please, Chris. Oh, you can't. Here's Jennifer Dickinson. Hold on, Jennifer. Let's get you in the center. You look absolutely gorgeous. Oh, not you, Marty. Ugh. All right, there she is. There she is. Jennifer, I love you, sister. The floor is yours. Great. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, it's great to be here. Thank you, Marty and Chris, for having me on your show. I'm very excited. A little nervous to be here, pushing myself out of my comfort zone to talk. But um, anyway, I'll introduce myself. I'm... Um, name is Jennifer Dickinson. I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, uh, which is kind of the west coast of Canada for people that don't live here. Um, I'm married, have four great adult children now. Uh, so you'd think my life would slow down, but no, it hasn't. But that's okay, because I like being busy. Uh, it keeps my mind active. It keeps me active. And and it's great to, you know, I think I'd go crazy if I didn't have something to do. But so anyway, um, I love dogs and horses. And I think Actually, I believe in my heart that I was meant to be born somewhere in a tropical locale because this uh, weather in the cold tundra of Canada in the winter is just too much for me to bear. But, you know, soon maybe I'll be able to live somewhere warm. I think I'll go down to St. Lucia and visit Julie um, where she's nice and warm all the time. So that's uh, one of my goals is to get somewhere warm. But um, I just um, also wanted to say a quick prayer today for those um, people and all the animals that were displaced in Jasper last week from the uh, wildfire. Um, I was thinking about this the other day and, you know, I know how nature works and I know that, you know, the, the town will overcome, the, the forest will overcome and the forest will grow and have great rebirth and all with all the new saplings that'll come from um from the pine cones that needed to be burned uh, to grow. And, you know, this kind of reminded me on passive and as we're witnessing the rebirth and as very soon it will be bigger and better than ever. But um, I continue on over the years, I have done a lot of various jobs. I'm like a jack of all trade, I guess you could say. Uh, at the beginning of my uh, career, I went to university and I got my paralegal diploma. But um, at the time, there was no jobs in law firms, couldn't find anything. And I was working at the Calgary Herald newspaper at the time on weekends, taking complaints from people whose paper was late. And that was a joy in itself, listening to the same complaint over and over and over. But anyway, I was working there and I got a full time job there. So I just stayed. And um, over the years while I was there, they moved me around from the marketing department to editorial. I ended up in the finance department. So that's how um, that came into play. And then um, I just they sent me to school to get my uh, certified management accounting degree, uh, which was super nice because they paid for it. So that was um, back in the day when the companies actually uh, cared about you. So that was, um, you know, a great place to work. I loved working there. And um 
the best job I think I ever had, I only did it for probably two, three months, was the um, Christmas fun coordinator. And that um, probably was where my um, charitableness came in and where I started to see the need for helping people. And I was, you know, in my late 20s. And, um, you know, my life was pretty good. We were young. We had a new family. We had a house. We both had good paying jobs. And I just really didn't go downtown much and see a lot of the issues down there and working with this campaign. And what it was, was um, that the Calgary Hill picked different um, charities every year. And then the writers would write articles about the charities, about the people that they were helping, and people would donate. So every year they would collect about one hundred and fifty dollars to $200,000. And so that one year I got to be the person that looked after this and go to all the different charities, hand out the checks and meet all the people and, you know, just see what they did. And it was a real eye opener for me to see the, you know, the tragedy that was out there. So that kind of changed the whole trajectory of my life. Uh, to be honest, and I started um, to volunteer with the places like the Women's Shelter um, and the Mustard Seed, which is a um, an, a homeless shelter for for people in Calgary. Um, and there was a few other places that you know that we were on our list, and it was just it was just um, to see what you can help to do was just phenomenal to me. So, um, but during those years, um, as I was up in the finance department, I got, you know, I ended up having um, my third and fourth child. I had twins, twin girls. I had two boys already, and then I had twin girls, and I had some medical issues, so I left, had to leave the Herald. I couldn't work there full-time anymore for specific reasons. It's, um, won't get into that here today, but anyway, that's when I started my life as an entrepreneur, and I started up a bookkeeping business to, you know, help pay for pay for bills because, you know, we are used to having a, being a two income family and going down to one was a little, you know, shocking, I guess you could say. So anyway, I started the bookkeeping business and, and it was working out really well because it gave me time freedom and I could be a mom and I could be there for my kids when they were home. Uh, I could go help out with their schools and, you know, be involved in all their sporting activities. And man, there were many, they were four of them. So we were involved in football and hockey and, baseball, soccer, the girls played field hockey, they Irish danced. And so we were always going somewhere to a tournament somewhere. We went to uh, South Bend, Indiana, which was really cool. And um, we played in the um, in the Notre Dame Stadium. That was really, really fun. Uh, we've been to Chicago, Nashville, um, all over the, you know, a lot of places and states all over Canada with their sporting and, and dancing. So it was, it was a very, very fun life, just very costly life. So uh, you can probably guess where this is going. I had to start to bring in extra income because it, the more I worked in my bookkeeping business, the less time I had with the family. So it wasn't really that great of a compromise. So this friend of mine um, introduced me to um, MLMs which I did for uh, many years. <laughs> and some of them worked, some of them didn't. Um, my friends supported me at the beginning, of course, you know, and then by the time I got to my 10th company, they were like, whoa, lady, back off, we're not doing this anymore. So I kind of swore them off. So um, kind of fast forward to 2020, um, when COVID was shut down, I was working, um, well, I still am actually, I manage a wedding facility. It's a community center in my community and I um, deal with um, weddings and all sorts of different events. So um, when COVID hit, um, we had to shut everything down. Like we had to phone everybody, cancel their weddings, which was very um, traumatic for everybody. And we were told that we couldn't do anything till August. So basically we're shut down for, from April to August is what we heard. When was that? March? March? I think it was, I think it was St. Patrick's Day that in here in Canada anyway, we got the um, shutdown. But um, yeah, so then I had a lot of time on my hands because I wasn't really working um, at that point. I still had my bookkeeping business, but you know, everything else I was doing was shut down because it was all to do with people. And um, so that's when my friend, it was the fall of, um, 2020, um, my friend Flo and I, we've been talking over the months to, um, you know, figure out what we're going to do with our lives. And she stumbled upon on passive. So uh, Florence Mullen, my dear friend here in Calgary, she 
sent me um, a Mike Ellis video and I was like, okay, I'm not doing any more anything else. Like, you know, no, I'm not getting involved in this anymore. So I kind of made up all these excuses why I couldn't watch it, why I wasn't going to watch it. But luckily for me, she kept pushing me and pushing me. So I finally broke down begrudgingly and I watched the video for a few minutes. And after I watched it for a few minutes, I started really, hey, he's got something here. This makes sense. Um, but I still had that, you know, needling feeling that something was you know, too good to be true, and it couldn't possibly happen to me. So um, I kind of was like, should I do this? Should I not? But you know, I have major FOMO. So if anybody knows, it's fear of missing out. So I, as my kids would call it, so I um, joined thinking, okay, well, it's only $97. It's not going to kill me. It's not going to break me. And what if it's true? What if I miss out? So um, so I joined. So in October of 2020, I became an impassive, passivian. I can never say that word. Um, because, you know, I was that person back in the, I don't know what it would have been, 2012, 2013. Um, a friend of mine told me to buy crypto and it was $20 a coin. And I was like, are you crazy? I am not spending my hard-earned money on fake money. I'm not doing it. And wasn't that a mistake? Big, big mistake. So, you know, I didn't want to miss out again. So luckily I joined because I'm so thankful I did. But again, <laughs> I didn't do anything until February of 2021. Um, and I wasn't really paying attention. I wasn't, you know, doing anything. And Flo kept bugging me, watch the videos, go on the Monday meeting, go, you know, you have to stay engaged. And so one Monday I was not feeling well and I was staying at home and I was laying in bed and I started watching that Monday webinar that used to be on. And, uh, you know, the one where all the leaders were on and they would, you know, they'd print through the presentation and then they would answer the questions of people who were new. And, and I really, really enjoyed uh, watching that. I just, and the thing that struck me the most was how much fun they all seemed to be having with each other and how they seem to be such good friends. And I just, I don't know what it was, but something in me resonated about that. And I thought, wow, these people really actually seem to care. They seem to really care about each other and care about the people they're talking to and really want to help. So I just, it just something snapped in me and I became very engaged at that point. So I really listened paid attention and um, started, you know, showing up at webinars and, you know, in the background, of course, and, you know, learning everything I could about the products and the company. So, um, but it wasn't until Chris started up Oh Bless webinars when I found my place. And I, I really um, enjoyed them. I would go um, um, to them all the time and started getting on the panel. I started talking, started meeting people. Um, and I just found my place there. I met some really great people. I made some really good friends. And um, I got to be with people who had the same feeling as me, the same heart, um, the heart of giving and wanting to help people and, and just knowing that, um, you know, what needs to be done out there to help people. So I'd found my home. So um you know, with on passive, I have found some great friends on and off um, the screen. And, you know, we have a really great group in Calgary. I was just telling Chris and, and Marty about this. You know, we have here we have um, Gemma, we have Polly, Naka, um, Flo, Mullen, and Engineer Mike. We all live in the same city and we all get together and we uh, visit, we go for coffee, we, you know, host parties for our founders when they come into Calgary, like, you know, our dear Pat and and um, Diane Lennon and oh God, I'm going to forget name, Judy Reese. So they come into town a lot and we um, visit with them and we, you know, have a great time. It's really quite fun. Um, so, um, you know, I wouldn't give up my friends for anything that I've met here. You know, I've met a lot of people online um, that I've never met in person, but they're just you know, such great, great human beings. And, you know, I really, really enjoy our menu group, our trivia group. I have fun when I when I can get there. Um, you know, we, we, we get into very competitive um, things and we have, um, you know, we can argue and bicker with each other, but we still love each other and we have fun. And I've just met some really great people on there that I think, you know, Marty and Chris, for example, and I just think that, you know, uh, we're going to have a lifelong bond because we all have the same um, the same 
passions for life and we have the same um same love for Ampassa, the same love for each other. So, um, you know, it's pretty great. And I'm sorry for the light. The sun is actually starting to shine in my office window now. So um, the sun's coming up here in Calgary. So um, anyway, uh, so I look a bit blurry, but I'll try to sit back here. There you go. Okay, so my second stage of life, I started writing. Um, and I published a novel a few years back. I just found, I've always loved writing, but it just was something that I kind of put in the back burner. But um, I'd written a couple children's books that I didn't really do anything with. But I finally sat down and wrote a book and got it published. And, you know, that was all very exciting. And I was very, you know, it was very fulfilling to, you know, to accomplish something like that. And currently I'm writing my second book of the trilogy. And I'm also writing a coming of age book um, that hopefully it'll be out in the next year. Um, but recently, the most, you know, fun thing I've been doing the last few years is uh, my daughter and I started a production company and she graduated with her bachelor of de bachelor's degree in fine arts and film. And so we started this company and we're making um, short films. We make, uh, we're working on a documentary right now about um, opera. Um, it seems like a weird topic, but um, my father was actually um, one of the founders of opera in Western Canada. So we uh, wanted to um, highlight that for him um, to make sure his, his legacy is kept intact, because uh, that was quite a few years ago. And um, so we're working on that. We're um, interviewing people all over North America, actually, that were involved with opera in Western Canada. And it's been quite, you know, quite fulfilling. And it's great working with my daughter. We do um, till we, we do a children's TV series. It's on YouTube. And uh, yeah, we're just trying to grow that business. So um, that's kind of my dream going forward to work on. And the exciting thing is, I think I can see all the ways that I'm passive is going to help us grow this business with its revenue revolutionary technology and products. And I, and I, you know, I'm just so excited to, to grow it and to teach other um, young people, um, you know, the business and help them get a foot in because, you know, it's so hard for young people to get even, you know, ahead these days. Um, so that's, you know, really one of my goals is to make sure that young people can, you know, have their chance and get, get ahead. So um, I'm really looking forward to Unpassive um, being able to help me with that. And, you know, I love the products, but I have to say my heart is with Obless as if you were uh, getting that from some of the other things I was talking about with the charities because I uh, volunteer with a few charities and the two main ones right now are a cancer charity, a childhood cancer charity and a dog rescue. And um, I can hardly wait till I can, you know, um, donate more to these charities because, you know, they really need them and they're great grassroots charities. Believe in the Gold is a um, cancer, childhood cancer charity and we raise funds for families struggling financially um, with the costs of um, helping their children get healthy. And it's, you know, it's, they have enough to worry about without having to worry about the financial issues. And, and I just want to make sure that every family doesn't have to worry and every child gets the best care finances, you know, can give if they have to have it here in Calgary, the, you know, the treatment, or if they have to go down the States, or if they have to go to Europe, I want to be able to, um, make that happen for them and make sure that they get the best treatment wherever it happens to be for them. So uh, that's like really, really important to me. And I also um, want to make sure that uh, with dog rescues, I want to make sure that, you know, no dog ever has to live um, in an abusive situation. I want to make sure that I can get all the dogs out of kill shelters and into homes where they can be, um, happy and live, live, live lives they deserve. They're the great um, animals, you know, are just pure, right? They're, they're, they don't have any ulterior motives. They just want to love you. They just want to be loved. And, and it's just, you know, I have two um, foster fails from CB Rescue, which is the uh, charity that's fo the foster that's really dear to my heart. And I just don't know what I would do without my two little pups. You know, they're, they're very funny and they make me laugh. And um, one of them was um, hit by a car and left for dead in the Dominican, my Oscar and Rue, our little puppy. Well, she's not little anymore. She's about 70 pounds, but she um, was uh, severely beaten by um, some 
I won't say what I think of him, but not a very nice human being. Um, and she came to us when she was four months old. And I just can't imagine how anybody could do that. So I just, you know, can hardly wait till I can um, be the, you know, be the person who can, you know, step in and help these animals. It would just be great. And, you know, um, most of you are probably no different than me. And it, you find it hard not to see all the um, the tragedies and that kind of stuff that are going on in this world today. And, you know, it's you want to help everywhere. And it can be very overwhelming, wondering where do I help? Where do I put my money? Where, you know, what what organization is honest? What, you know, that type of thing. But, you know, I just remember like Ash saying in the past that, you know, their heroes already doing the work. We just need to find out who they are and fund them, right? We don't have to reinvent the wheel. So, um, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find those heroes who are doing the great work. And, you know, whether it's people working with the homeless or those small groups that are cleaning the oceans that are not getting funded by the government, I want to make sure that uh, they have the support that they need to get the job done. You know, my dad always said charity starts at home. And, um, you know, this is two meanings to me because I definitely want to make sure that I help my family and make sure that they're looked after um, and they can live fulfilling lives and they can, you know, help make changes for other people as well. But I also want to look close to home and make sure that I can help the uh, people in my city, province and in my country and make it a better place for everyone. And, you know, with millions of us, um, founders around the world, if everybody just focuses on their local area, can you imagine the change that'll make, that'll happen? Like, it's just going to be phenomenal. I just, sometimes I just get so overwhelmed with thinking about how we are going to change the world. I just, you know, it, it brings me to tears. I just can't, I can't imagine. And I believe most founders will follow the wishes of uh, Mr. Ash Mufara. I really do. I think, I think, you know, the majority of, of us will. And, you know, at this point, you know, I just want to say a big thank you to um, Ash Mufara for his vision and his crazy hard work and his passion uh, to make the world a better place, to make our lives better. Uh, I can't thank him enough. I just, um, I just have so much respect and, and just in such awe of him. It's, you know, he's just an amazing human being. And um, I also wanted to thank our tech team, thank Mohammed Kamal for his unwavering vision and, and his work ethic. Um, and I just wanted to thank you guys and thank you all for being there and being my friends and, you know, making my life over the last almost four years uh, really great with the new friendships I've made. I just can't imagine being anywhere else. So, um yeah, you all have a great day. Have a um, wonderful, what is it, Tuesday. And I hope, uh, you know, you all have a blessed day. Thanks again, Marty and Chris, for having me. Wonderful, Jennifer. Wow, you just, I think you're going to save the world all by yourself. <laughs> uh, you really are involved in a lot of great things that I love. Um, absolutely kids with cancer, anyone with cancer. But the forests, the oceans, the dogs. Uh, there's millions and millions of people who are dog enthusiasts or animal that want to save animals. So you're going to relate to literally millions of people because uh, some some people don't even have like regular kids, but their dogs are their kids. Mm -hmm. But I have two ladies on my street who do exactly what you do, and they got dogs all the time because they're rescuing them, trying to find them. So Jennifer, really, really good stuff. Really good stuff. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I agree with you. Like we have, we all, we've always had a dog since we've been married, and you come home, and you're the best thing that ever happened. <laughs> yeah. You walk out, you just go out and get the uh, mail. Yeah. You come back, you act like you've been gone for a month. <laughs> How are you doing? Oh my gosh, where have you been? I just walked out front, you know. Yeah. <laughs> But they're always happy. They don't know think about anything to get you. Or you're right. It's uh, yeah. unconditional love with a, a pet. Yeah, they're it is. Out. It's just amazing. And I, I don't know how anybody hurts them. Like it just. I look at Rue, who's my puppy, who's like big now. But she, I just think, how could somebody hurt her? Like he was kicking her down the street when he was Ugh. she was taken away from him by somebody. And I'm like, mm -hmm. what an evil, evil human being you must be to do that to a little. And she was yeah. only four months mm -hmm. old. Like she was just like little. Yeah. 
It just, yeah, it sickens you know, I, me. I, it does. I, it just I, I, think, I think he'd be visiting the emergency room if I saw it. I hate to I say know. that. But, um, yeah. No, but, you know, it's, it, with Unpassive, I think a lot of it, like you said, Jennifer, and, I, and I, I've said this to a lot of people. There's a lot of people right now that are helping people with nothing. They have no backing. They're already the hero. I don't need to have my name on something. Mm -hmm. I want to find those people that are doing it with nothing and give them something to do it with. I think yeah. that's cool about Obless. I think, uh, yeah, if you can help one person. Look, I can walk up my door and see people that, I, that need help, no doubt. I can walk in my door <laughs> and see people that need help. Uh, yeah. But anyway, thank you very much. You were amazing. Amazing. Well, well thank you for having me. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up Obless. I'll say a couple seconds here, and then we're going to zip. Um, you know, one of my original goals when I first started doing Obless, uh, and it still is a goal, is to connect every charity, no matter what it is in the world, all together through Unpassive, because we're going to have literally billions of people uh, with all kind of different, you know, whether it's cancer, saving the forest, saving the oceans. And uh, Ash Mafar has talked about changing the color of the world. You're going to see the difference. That's going to be the difference because uh, hopefully most, I would say all charities are eventually going to come to us because we're 100%. The charity money goes to them, not 10%, not to all of it. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be able to do amazing things with uh, through Unpassive and Obless. And Ash has <clears throat> had a strategy for that. And I'm sure in the future he's going to come out and talk about it. But yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about Obless. Yeah, it's, me too right there in my brain and we're just waiting for things to happen where we can really start talking about but jennifer uh you brought in a lot of amazing things out uh for me because sometimes i forget and i get reminded that's why i love doing this everyone that comes on to this show we call it uh brings something out of me that you i'm like wow i never thought of that or hey yeah that's something i want to do so world you're looking at jennifer dickinson from canada she uh she wants to save the world she wants to change the world so uh, remember Jennifer, because if you're what she, if you're, if you're anything like Jennifer, you're going to want to talk to her. Jennifer, thank you again for having, uh, for coming on. We love you. Oh, you're welcome. Love, love you guys too. I didn't even know you had four kids. Yeah, I do. <laughs> now yeah, I twins. Do. My oops babies, I call them. <laughs> <laughs> and then they were twins. <laughs> good thing. It was. Very good. Wow. But yeah, but I love them all. I'm glad because they were both girls. I had two boys and then I had two girls, so I wouldn't trade oh. the world for them. So, wow. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Awesome human beings they are. All right. All right everybody birthday. say goodbye and I'll have a great day and see you tomorrow. Oh, don't forget, 11 o'clock. Red is got in the chair. In, in the chair. chair. Victor Gumbalati. And then you tomorrow we have, tomorrow on Shine the Light, we have Lori Lund. Oh, oh yeah. 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 I'm just trivia. Yeah. If you listen real quick, <laughs> if you want to get on the show, I got a lot of people, a lot of lists. Come to trivia. I want to see who you are, get your name so I can put you on the schedule because right now it is busy. <laughs>